To me, it comes down to a single salient fact. On September 7, 2011, you savagely beat your child to the edge of death. He got mad at me because I wouldn't let him sleep. So, A lady who was convicted of murder three years ago in the death of her baby daughter at Cedar Springs will spend the rest of her life in jail. Tatiana Fusari, 31, received a life sentence without the possibility of release. That is the obligatory penalty for criminal murder. Fusari was convicted guilty of murder and first-degree child abuse in the death of her 10-month-old daughter, Mary Welch, by a jury. On August 2, 2018, Mary was discovered dead in her cot at her family's Salon Township home. An autopsy indicated that she was starved and dehydrated, and officials claim she was left alone for 17 hours before her mother discovered her dead body. She weighed just about a pound more than she did when she died. Fusari pled not guilty to second-degree murder and second-degree child abuse in Mary's death in 2020 but was permitted to withdraw that plea after electing to face a jury. She testified at trial, telling jurors that her husband mistreated her, which she claimed prevented her from defending Mary. In addition to the life sentence, Fusari received a concurrent term of 15 to 30 years in prison for child abuse, with credit for 1,102 days served. She was crying badly when a life sentence was ordered for her. As a mother, one of your primary responsibilities was to protect your kids. And in that respect, you failed in the worst possible way. It was intended to be a straightforward eviction. However, when officials searched Michelle Blair's home, what they discovered sent shock waves across Detroit. Michelle Blair was living on Detroit's east side with her four children when she was evicted for failing to pay her rent in 2015. According to relatives, she was unable to retain a job and would often contact them for money. But the calls stopped when they refused to assist and recommended her to seek a job and return to school. Michelle Blair obviously ignored them since she was presented with an eviction notice on March 24, 2015. But she wasn't present. That's when a worker from the 36th District Court entered the house and started removing furniture. What came next was not furniture. The frozen corpse of a teenage girl wrapped in a huge plastic bag was found inside a white deep freezer in the home's living room. When the police came, they made yet another discovery, the corpse of a kid directly beneath her. These bodies were recognized as Blair's children, Stephen Barry and Stoney Blair. The medical examiner declared their deaths murders and discovered they had been in the freezer for at least a couple of years. Blair told the court she had no remorse for her actions. They felt no remorse for what they had done to my kid. There was no other way out. Rape has no justification. I'd kill them again. Prosecutor Karen Goldfarb indicated that no proof of rape was discovered. Michelle Blair's parental rights to the surviving children were terminated by Wayne County Circuit Judge Edward Joseph. The children were placed for adoption by Child Protective Services. Michelle Blair pled guilty in June 2015 to two charges of first-degree premeditated murder and is currently serving a life sentence without the possibility of parole at the Huron Valley Correctional Facility in Ypsilanti, Michigan. So breaking tonight, a woman collapses here in the courtroom after she is convicted of killing a couple and their unborn child in an argument over hair week. On January 22nd, 2016, Shelby Isaac shot and murdered Eddie Tate, his girlfriend, and their unborn child in the parking lot of Sycamore Lake Apartments on Westchester Circle. When police got to the scene, they located Tate lying on the ground with several gunshot wounds. He was declared dead at the scene. Edwina Thomas, Tate's girlfriend, was brought to the hospital in critical condition and subsequently died. She was between six and eight weeks pregnant. Tate and his cousin ran a hair salon called Virgin Hair for Us. 
They sold extensions and wigs, ranging in price from $50 to $250. Defense attorneys claimed and speculated that Isaac had bought two packages of hair extensions on the day Eddie and Edwina died. Isaac subsequently phoned him to purchase more hair weaves. DNA forensic evidence reveals Isaac's fingerprints on a receipt found inside Tate's car. Shelby Isaac was arrested on three charges of first-degree murder by Judge James Lammy. Prosecutors allege throughout the trial that Isaac met with Tate before the death, bought $250 in weaves, and set up another meeting under the idea that she wanted to purchase more. Isaac opened fire on the couple when Tate arrived at the flat with his pregnant girlfriend. She lured that man to his death, said Assistant District Attorney Gavin Smith to the jurors. Gary Dotson, a witness, told police he saw Isaac with a bundle of cash and blood on her clothes. Isaac collapsed after Judge James Lammy read the first guilty count of second-degree murder. Isaac had to be carried out of the courtroom. Outside the courtroom, witnesses could hear her screaming. Isaac was prosecuted and convicted of two charges of second-degree murder, one count of reckless homicide, and one count of criminally negligent homicide on November 19, 2016. Shelby Isaac received a 30-year term in Tennessee prison for women. We, the jury, fixed the defendant, Shauna Huber's punishment for the offense of murder at life imprisonment. In 2012, a Kentucky woman named Shana Hubers shot her lover, Ryan Poston, six times in self-defense. Yet two injuries eventually found her guilty of murder. Many of Ryan Poston's friends watched with anxiety as his relationship with Shayna Hubers hit bump after bump throughout their 18-month romance. They recalled being very obsessed with him and the pair constantly breaking up and reuniting. Hubers' sentiments for Poston had begun to deteriorate. My love has turned to hate, she said in a letter to a friend, stating that Poston only remained with her because he felt awful for her. Hubers acknowledged to Poston, that she had considered shooting him when they went to the gun range. However, on October 12, 2012, tensions between Shayna Hubers and Ryan Poston reached new heights. Poston had then planned a date with Miss Ohio Audrey Bolt. Hubers appeared as she was about to leave his residence. They got into a fight and Hubers shot Poston six times. Shayna Hubers' conduct seemed strange to investigators from the start. For starters, she'd waited 10 to 15 minutes after shooting Ryan Poston in self-defense before dialing 911. When the police took her to the station, she didn't stop talking. Though the prosecution portrayed Hubers as a cold-blooded murderer, her defense accused Poston of treating Hubers like a yo-yo and breaking up with her just to entice her back. Hubers' second trial, however, resulted in the same result as her first. They judged her guilty of Ryan Poston's murder and sentenced her to life in prison this time. Shayna Hubers is now completing her term at the Kentucky Correctional Institution for Women. When the life sentence was issued, she started crying in her attorney's lap. Are you guilty of the offense charged? I'll set your sentence at confinement in the penitentiary for a period of 99 years. The sentence goes into effect today. Despite requests for mercy because she was no longer the monster who conducted the crime, a woman confessed to beating her two-year-old daughter and gluing the child's hands to a wall was sentenced to 99 years in prison. I will never forgive myself for what I did to my own daughter, said Elizabeth Escalona, who pleaded guilty to felony child abuse in July. She faced everything from probation to life in jail. Prosecutors demanded 45 years in prison. Escalona allegedly lost her temper with Jocelyn Sidello about potty training issues. Escalona thrashed and kicked Jocelyn before gluing her hands to an apartment wall with super glue. The youngster was in the hospital for many days. During the sentencing hearing earlier this week, defense counsel Angie Nduka questioned Escalona what she thought of photographs of her daughter's injuries shown by prosecutors earlier this week. Only a monster does that, said Escalona. Nduka then questioned Escalona whether she considered herself a monster. When that happened, I was, Escalona said. Escalona requested a chance to demonstrate that she had changed, adding that she would accept whatever punishment was fair. I want everybody to know I'm not a monster, Escalona said. I love my kids. Escalona acknowledged beating and kicking her kid, but said she couldn't remember why. 
prosecutors painted Escalona as an unsuitable mother with a violent past. They've played tapes of Escalona as a teenager, threatening to murder her mother. They said she was a former gang member who began consuming marijuana at the age of 11. Jocelyn was in a coma for several days after suffering from brain hemorrhaging, a broken rib, many bruises, and bite marks. Witnesses said that some flesh had been pulled off her hands, where physicians discovered adhesive residue and white paint chips from the apartment wall. The severity of the blow to that child's leg, and to say that you did not recognize what had been done, to ignore what must have been the excruciating sounds that came from that child on a daily basis. An unusual incident occurred in a Charleston courtroom when two lesbian lovers fainted, cried hysterically, and hyperventilated after learning they would spend life in prison for the murder of a three-year-old child. Court officials had to take Erica May Butts and Shanita Latrice Cunningham off the floor and hold them in chairs as they were brought out of the chamber. Butts and Cunningham, both 25, of Somerville, South Carolina, were sentenced to life in prison for murdering Serenity Richardson in 2009 while she was in their care. Serenity had been visiting Butts, her godmother and her mother's closest friend, and Cunningham, Butts' boyfriend, at their house in Somerville, South Carolina, for two weeks when the abuse occurred. Words cannot convey what these ladies did to that poor young kid, said Elizabeth Gordon, associate managing solicitor for Charleston County. They hit her with a belt and plastic coat hangers repeatedly. The outlines of the hits may be seen on this child's body. Except for the soles of her feet, no part of this child's body was uninjured. Nothing had ever moved Circuit Court Judge Deirdre Richardson as much as the photographs of the tiny girl's beaten corpse. Butts told the Post and Courier, I was responsible for some things, but I would never kill her. Then, practically screaming through her sobs, she turned to Aisha and said, I will always love you no matter what. I just want to tell you I'm so, so sorry. Thank you for watching. Be sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and stay tuned for more content like this.